What's up everybody? Welcome back to another episode of All the Mods Expert Mode. Oh yeah guys, so a couple episodes ago we set up our Batania stuff over here and I think it was the last episode, the episode before I was talking about the Spark Tinkerer and how like these things will be using mana all the time and we want to isolate the sparks so they're not constantly drawing mana. Apparently there was a change to Batania that I wasn't aware of. Yeah, previously when I've used Batania, this is the first time I've used it in 1.10 or higher. Uh, previously when I use it, when you turn the portal on, it just constantly draws mana to keep that portal open. So if you don't use it for a long time, you want to kind of turn it off. Even though the book says you should probably leave it open all the time. Anyway, so it's been changed now. So the portal doesn't draw mana just to stay open, but it does draw mana when you put items through it and convert things. So that is a change that I wasn't aware of. So. The whole spark tinkerer thing in the isolation, not really uh, something you want to do in this particular version, but in older versions, like in 1710, that's the way to go. Anyway, we got it set up. There's no real reason to change it, so I'll just leave it like that. I just want to bring that up. Yeah, you guys have told me about that in the comments, and I just didn't know about it, so that's pretty cool. So last episode, we were messing around with some Abyssal Craft stuff. Uh, off camera between last episode and now, I was playing around with it a little bit more, trying to figure out more about this mod. Uh, we saw that putting the book on the pedestal down there and using the acceleration wand, we can kind of charge it faster. And I was trying to figure out a way if we could get it to go faster yet. So we have uh, our statues here. So by default, these statues can power uh, energy pedestal three blocks away. So like we have the statue here. We have the third block, we have the energy pedestal. If it's too close, it won't put any more stuff. If it's too far, it won't put any more stuff. So I was doing some more reading on how this works. Apparently you can put uh, the statues on stone pillars, the monolith stone pillars, and you can move it back a block, it seems like, to power these. Now I was trying to do some research in the Necronomicon here on how this all works, but it's not like super, Super informative, I guess. So if we go to the information section of the rituals, we go to potential energy, we can kind of scroll over to here. This is where it talks about it. So monolith stone pillars boost the range, but the most I get to see that this boosts the range of these statues is just one block. I tried putting them on two pillars and moving it back as like a fifth block away or whatever, and it just would not work. But uh, it turns out that uh, these statues, if you place them right next to each other, they don't shoot their little beams. But with the pillars, you can kind of place them every block like that, and that still seems to work. And with the pillars, again, you can move them back a further block, so we can have like two rows. So we're able to pack these in closer, which will power our Dreadlands Energy Pedestal, which I have upgraded twice, I do believe, <laughs> since we last looked at this thing. Uh, it was also talking about these Ritual Charms, which... Uh, that's also under ritual underneath information and potential energy. So I was kind of playing around with that to see if I could get any of that to work. Uh, I think I did it wrong. I made the ritual thing on the boost. They boost various stats. So there's like boost range, etc. I tried boosting it, but it doesn't seem to be making any more. And then there's ways you can configure these to be specific to one of these idle types. Anyway, so... I couldn't get that to work, but I saw that there was the energy relay, so I made those, I've upgraded those, and then those can shoot <laughs> their PE over to like energy collectors, which is, this is just the default one, I believe, but from the energy collector, you can use another relay and shoot that over to something else. So I have that shooting over to an abyssal wasteland energy container, which is kind of cool. So this can store up to 60,000 PE at this tier. You can level it up even further uh, but what you can do with that is charge your Necronomicon in this thing. You can even decharge if you want to, so you can see the power is going up. Yeah, so we're taking power out of our Necronomicon, putting it to the container. But I can't figure out how to make this thing go faster. <laughs> it seems like if you upgrade the tier, it'll just hold more, but it still kind of goes at this speed. Uh, acceleration Wand will fill up our book faster and uh, unfill it. So if I use the Acceleration Wand on that like that, you can see that... We have now drained out over a thousand uh, and then we can fill it up faster with the acceleration wand. But anyway, this is for storing large amounts of the PE, which is very nice. That's something that we're going to need. So 
Uh, what I wanted to do today is I wanted to continue on with our progression into Abyssal Craft here. We have another place to go. So if we go back to, oh, is it Forbidden Knowledge Dreadlands progression? Yeah, so this is what we need to do. So we need uh, to reach Armorthal. I don't know how to pronounce that. So we need a transmutator, which we have. We have to defeat the boss, the Dread Beast. Uh, but in order to reach them, we have to get two pieces of an altar. And then it says we have to place it at Y40 inside a Dreadlands Mount biome. So there's like a lot of crazy stuff that we have to do in order to get this done. So let's go back here to Rituals. We'll go to Dreadlands. So this is the first piece of the altar. So to do that, we need the, the Dreaded Gateway Key, which we have already made. We need some bones, we need dread cloth, we need dreadium ingots, and then we need dreadstone. So we have the dreadstone already, we have bones, that's fine. Uh, dread cloth and the dreadium ingot are things we have to look at. Now if we go to the top portion, both of these also state that there's a sacrifice required. If we go to the top portion, we need more dread cloth, more dread ingots, more dread... Oh, I guess that's still dread cloth, dread ingots, and then we need a bucket and some sticks in order to make the top part. So it's going to be a little bit complicated, I think, in order to do this. So dreadium ingot, let's take a look at that real quick. So dreadium ingot, this stuff right here. So to make these, we can form it out of the nuggets. The nuggets we can transmutate from crystallized dreadium shard using this stuff. So that's going to take a little bit of time <laughs> in order to do that. The crystallized radium shard comes from crystallized radium fragment, and those come from, I guess, dread shagoth flesh. But this is a different thing. This is a crystallizer, right? Um, I don't think we've made a crystallizer yet. Yeah, there's a few things in here that I'm not sure how we're gonna do that. So we can also look at the radium ingot, the recipe for that. Uh, looks like we can transmute the crystallized radium or dreaded shard of abyssal knight. So there's a couple of recipes for that. And then we also need the blue stuff, which I think we bucketed out of the first dimension that we've gone to. All right. So yeah, there's a few things to do here. So I guess what I'm going to do first, I'm going to try and get some of this stuff going. Uh, we are going to need a crystallizer, I do believe. So we need dreadstone bricks, a furnace. We could probably go downstairs real quick and see if we can make some of this stuff. So let's t uh, search for a crystallizer. Not the deep resonance one. We need the other one. And I don't see it here. So let me go this, this. Uh, crystallizer fuel. That's the transmutator. So crystallizer. Let's see. Can we make this guy? No, we don't have a furnace. We don't have any of that. Okay, let me try and make that real quick and then we'll check it out. All right, guys. Well, I couldn't figure out how to get these dreaded shards of Abyssal Knight. I was kind of going through here, looking at the dreadium ingot, trying to figure it out. So it said put the dreaded shard into this, but the way you get these things is through a crystallizer. And anyway, back in the Dreadlands, you can kill like the guards or whatever, and those drop these dreaded shards of Abyssal Knight. The guards are the ones that were setting us on fire. So now we should be able to do that. So we put the liquid corollium bucket in here, plus these. It should start producing the stuff. Now, acceleration wand is gonna be our friend, probably. Oh yeah, look at that. That's going pretty quick. You can see on the tool tip. So yes, we'll be able to do this. Now we need like two blocks of this, which I assume is 18 ingots. So let's go see if we can craft those up real quick. I'm sure we can. We'll do one of those numbers and there we go. Cool. All right, so now that we got those, we still need to make some more of these dreadium ingots and then we need to make the cloth stuff. Uh, so I believe that was made out of the fragments So the uses on the fragments. Yeah. So leather string and the dread fragments make those cloth things. Now we're getting these just off the regular other monsters there in the dreadlands. So anyway, let me go ahead and finish getting the rest of this stuff together. We'll look at making the ritual and then we'll be back guys. All right guys. So our first ritual, let's go ahead and try and make the bottom part of the altar thing. So we'll put our key here. We'll need two bones. That's uh, gonna be fine. We need two dread stone. We need a dread cloth. And then we need two of the dreadium ingots. There we go. And then these are for the next recipe for the top part. 
It says we need a living entity nearby. So we're going to use Mr. Cow here. And let's see if we can get this to happen. <laughs> All right. So it looked like it took the cow. So I assume things are happening correctly. Uh, it does require 20,000 PE, which it looks like that it used over Necronomicon here. And there we go. There is this bottom part thing. Now, it does look like we used our key, which is kind of unfortunate. We will never be able to make another portal until we make another key, I guess. But we have our warp, so we can warp back here whenever we want to. So, eh, I don't know if that's that big of a deal. Anyway, let's go and make the top part. So, that is two of the Corallium ingots. We are... Dreading gets dreadium the cloth uh two sticks and finally a bucket okay and then we need to put down another living entity oh the other thing is we do need to charge up our dreadlands necronomicon before we can do anything so i guess we're gonna hold off on this for a moment we do need to go back uh where's my bees warp over here yeah we do need to go back and fill up our necronomicon so i haven't gotten a chance to completely fill it using this thing. So this will be kind of interesting. So we have enough for two more full charges of the Necronomicon, which is pretty cool. So yeah, that charge is pretty slowly, but as we saw, we can use the acceleration wand on here to speed that process up. And I bet we could get a mechanical user over here like we were doing to speed up other machines and make them go really fast. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it's just gonna take a few more seconds. Let me go ahead and charge this up and then we'll try to do the next ritual. All right, guys, well, our Necronomicon has fully filled up, right? We should be ready to go for this next ritual. I'm going to give you guys a pro tip. Don't try and shift right click a soul vial on the ground while you have a shuriken in your offhand because you're probably going to throw a shuriken at whatever it is that you're dropping and kill it. Not that, not that I would know anything about that. So anyway, let's try and place down Mr. Cal once again. We will shift right click the altar. And that should complete the ritual for the top part of what we need here. So yeah, that's draining the Necronomicon really fast. Yeah, we already have the bottom part and there is the top part. So it says that we need to go into some kind of a mountain area. Yeah, there's the top part, cool. So yeah, you know what? Let's go back to the book one more time before we do something wrong. Yeah, we don't want to go there. We want to forbidden knowledge, dreadlands, progression. Okay, so it says... Let's go back here. Two pieces. Both pieces are created through the rituals. Once you have both altar pieces, you need to place them at Y40 inside a dreadlands mountain biome and right-click it. Now, does the bottom part have to be at Y40 or the top part? Or are they side by side? Yeah, I don't know. Anyway, so doing so will grant you entry to the lair of the boss. After fighting through dread guards and eventually killing the boss, you will receive a dread plagued gateway key along with loot. The key needs to be transmuted into a functioning one. Okay, so we place on the thing, we make a gateway, we go kill the boss, and we get a key that is unactivated, and then we have to transmute it, transmute it into an activated one. Okay, well, let's go that far. So we need Abyssal Wasteland Mount or Dreadlands Mountains, right? Ah, let's double check one more time because I don't want to do this incorrectly. <laughs> Progression, Dreadlands Mountain Biome, which we are in right now. Okay, so we need to go down to Y40. I guess we will just dig straight down like, you know, you do in Minecraft because that's the best way to do things <laughs> all right so we're at y65 right now cool so we just need to go down to y40 now i don't know if we need to clear out a room or if we just place this thing or how this works i'm gonna assume we place the bottom part right there so there's the bottom there's the top click the top block to enter the layer Okay, so now we are in the layer. Oh, did it just form the layer here? What is this? Does this just take us back outside? Oh, interesting. Okay. So now we're in the layer. That's just redstone. I almost thought that was like an elevator block kind of a thing. Oh boy. Are we ready to do this? 
I kind of feel like we should be okay. Uh, our saturation is going to give us like a natural regen. Our armor is pretty much good to go. I think we can give this a go. Okay, so this is one of those guards that I was talking about before. These are the guys that drop those, those crystal things that we transmuted into the ingots. So we have to fight through all these guys. You, I forget, can you use range attack on them? Maybe that would be easier. Oh yeah, the range attack does work. Okay, so they're gonna set me on fire, uh, which is fine. We can always <laughs> use a bucket of water, put ourselves out again. All right, there we go. Now you're dead. And then we get some more of these dreadstone things. All right, let's put ourselves out. Oh, we have the boss thing on there. Okay, so this is interesting. I wasn't expecting there to be like this castle, like this whole fortress looking thing, which is really cool. I feel like there's something behind me pushing me into the boss. I guess these things just keep spawning. Where do these guys come from? I'm not sure. There is a lot of them. Okay, you know what? We're flying. So that's the lava over there. Let's come over here real quick. We'll ignore you for a moment. What is this? Oh, there's a crystallizer here. So we didn't even have to make one. The furnace doesn't have anything in it. We have an anvil. Okay. Well, I made the crystallizer anyway, because I assumed we needed it. <laughs> all right. So more of these guys, we'll just ignore them. I suppose no reason to fight them all. So these guys just spawned as I came down here. What is that? Is it going to be that easy? I guess flight <laughs> makes it super, super easy. That thing is creepy looking. It's got three heads similar to a wither, but then it's got like this weird like shield thing behind it with like these tentacles. I don't even know what that is. So what are you, what's, what are you hiding back here, guy? Nothing interesting. Oh my goodness, all of these minions. Wow. And those guys look like they jump straight up, right? Or are they just spawning on me? I'm not sure how that's working. Okay, well, we're getting rid of the minions anyway. There's far too many guys in this room. <laughs> all right. We'll take care of this guy. Just get rid of all of the ads that we can, I suppose. So that boss doesn't appear to be doing anything to us unless the boss is what's spawning all these things on us. Not entirely sure how that all works. All right, taking them down, taking them down. Let's put ourselves out. So do you attack? So it's probably easier just to walk up to this guy and just smack him with the sword, I guess, right? I mean, we're doing more damage per hit. And there we go. The dread beast has fallen. Uh, kind of. It's kind of fallen. It's it's in the process of falling. There it is. Wow, that's a lot of stuff. Okay, so let's put on our magnet here. Oh, we already have the magnet on. Wow, that's a lot of stuff. Okay, so we got a lot of these guys remaining. Let's just go ahead and take them out. <laughs> All right, you, you, and you. Okay, cool. So we ended up getting eight dridium ingots, I believe. Some dread fragments, dread shards, dread plague gateway key. This is what we need, and we need to uh, transmute that, I do believe. And I assume this is the gateway. I'm not sure what this is. What's behind here? We got a chest. Okay. The legendary treasure. Of the dress <laughs> piece of dirt awesome <laughs> okay so now that we got the key we need to go back to our base here yeah see i warped here and then we shoot like a thing yeah that's not good that's how we ended up killing the cow and we spawned it in okay so we need the bucket the corallium bucket i grabbed a few extra buckets of this stuff while i was in the wasteland previously so we would have extras and wouldn't have to keep going back there. But anyway, we're going to waste it now just for this one transmutation. 
and accelerated. Cool. So there is Shagroth's Rylahan Gateway's key. Right click on the ground to create a portal. Infinite uses. Okay. So now we got a key to go to the next dimension. And that's just going to kind of waste that stuff, but that's not a big deal. That's There's a lot of lakes and stuff. <laughs> all right, so we'll put that away, put all this away. I'm not sure what to expect in this next dimension. We got a lot of this dreaded armor. I don't think we're going to keep it, though. Let's just throw that away. Put this stuff away. Uh, we probably will need to uh, recharge your Necronomicon. But anyway, let's go back to the Dreadlands. Yeah, we'll go back here. I think we could probably click the portal in this room. Maybe we should do that. I don't know. Infinite use, as it said. Whoop. Oh, that's a crazy looking portal. So this is the Armothal stone. This is the stuff that we needed. The Armothal stone is what we needed in order to make something. Yeah, the def the last of the blood magic stuff. So acceleration runes, right? Uh, augmented capacity, rune of the orb. What were these other things? Uh, charging rune. I'm not sure what this one does. I think that might be newer to blood magic. And then we can make these pillars and the bricks out of this stuff. Okay, so this is really good. I assume when we go through this portal here, We'll have loads of that stuff we'll be able to mine up, which is fantastic. Uh, all right, let's do it. Let's go. Welcome to your end. Seriously, I think is what that said. It kind of went off the screen a little bit. All right, so loading the terrain. Hopefully, we're not going to be suffocating in a block here. Okay, so we're in the portal. <laughs> it's a floating portal. Oh, my goodness. So this is like a Skylands biome. Oh, wow. Okay. Night vision. That helps a little bit. So that enemy right there is on like a village. Is there many villages nearby? And this guy, oop, and he's gone. I was going to see if that was a different type of enemy. So this is called a remnant. This looks similar to one of the enemies that spawn uh, from charging up our Necronomicon. So this is like a villager. Oh, okay, so we can trade him for these coins. The coins are what we needed in order to make those... Uh, well, let's take a look at this coin. Yeah, we needed these in order to infuse our ritual charms into that type, the deity. Okay, well, well, we might look at that. I don't know what kind of stuff here these villagers are going to be trading us. There's a lot of this brick stuff, so we'll be able to farm that quite easily. What do you sell? So it's pretty much the same thing is what it seems like. Man, this is kind of cool. I like this. All right, so what's in here? Hello. So you want to trade a bunch of coins for a Dreadlands Necronomicon? Hmm. That might be useful. I wonder what their other trades are. Oh my goodness, there's just so much of this brick. All right, all right. What, do you, what are you selling here? Sell it for a shovel. Interesting. Yeah. Oh, you know what? The treasure chest in here might have... Oh, there's no treasure chest. <laughs> I was hoping I'd be able to get some really good loot out of these, but I guess not. Okay, so now that we're here, what is this? Oh, wow. What is this? Dark brick. This is like some kind of a fortress. I don't know if there's like a proper way in. Uh... Okay, so there is a proper way in. Yeah, these are the guys that spawn. What are you called? Minion of the Gatekeeper? These guys drop some stuff. I've killed the, these guys a lot. They spawn, like, uh, by where the Necronomicon gets charged up on the pedestal or whatever. What do you drop? He didn't drop anything. Okay, that's unfortunate. Uh, I should probably come over to our portal, though, and mark it. And <laughs> put a waypoint there. And then we'll go check out that structure. All right, guys, so I want to harvest some of this Amethal stone, and I went to go mine it, and I noticed that it says X on the pickaxe. It's like, wait, what? <laughs> it doesn't work. I tried uh, the hammer first of all. Yeah, it doesn't work at all. So I tried making this Dreadium pickaxe. It's got 2,300 durability, which is a lot. It says this will work. 
So we can mine it with this. It's kind of slow. And does that turn into a cobble? No, that's just a straight stone. Okay, so that's kind of cool. I don't know what the mining level is or if this material will only be harvested with this specific type of pickaxe. Anyway, we're able to collect this stone now, so that's going to be super useful. I will have to try and figure out, though, if we can mine this stuff faster because this is a little slow. I wonder if a quarry would be able to mine this stuff. Hmm, that might be the way to go if you want large quantities of that because... Yeah, it takes a while just to get those 18 pieces. But anyway, uh, also I was looking at the map when I went to set my waypoint, and that's what this structure looks like. That's kind of a crazy looking thing, right? So yeah, these villages are pretty big, and then it's got this crazy thing here. I don't know if this is like where the next boss is, or if that's like the stronghold thing, or whatever. These are just the villagers, right? Whoop! Oh, oh, dang it. I right clicked on them holding the shuriken. That was a mistake. Oh, he's mad. Did you drop anything? Eldritch scale. Okay. So let's go back to this thing. Can I break this at all? No, it does not say I can. What about with this pickaxe? No, we cannot break this. Wow, that progress. Oh, that's like mining obsidian, I would imagine. <laughs> oh. Gatekeeper of the Abyss. I guess I got too close to that and that spawned in the boss. It sounds like a blaze, right? So is that it? Uh, you know what? Before we go in here, we probably should read the book and see what the progression says. Oh, we need to upgrade this to the next level too, don't we? So the use is we need to upgrade that to the Amalthal Necronomicon. So we need that and we need to get the essence, which means I need to use our Dreadland Staff of Rending and start poking at some mobs, although I haven't seen too many mobs around here, so I don't know... Do we just do it to these guys? I guess so. Probably we'll just start wrecking our villager guys here, our remnants, and see if we can get the stuff that we need. So what are we at now? 48? Yeah, that's the Omthal energy. Okay. Well, I'm gonna have to do this for a while. I don't know if there's a faster way of doing it, spam clicking. No, it seems like that's just gonna go kind of slow. All right, well, I need to get some of that essence, eight of them. Yeah, this is gonna take a while. All right, guys, so I went ahead and I farmed up eight of the Almothal essence, and then we have over a stack of this ghoul flesh. It took a while. This was the longest part of it, to be honest, was to get all this flesh. But yeah, we should be able to craft the things that we need to craft now, so we can do that, and that'll give us our eight skins that we need to upgrade our Necronomicon. So we'll put that here. And our Dreadlands one, and there is the Amothal one. Awesome. All right, so we just got Knowledge of the Unknown Achievement. Okay, so let's go back to Forbidden Knowledge. Here's the next section. Progression says, now that you arrived at Amothal, it's time to battle the Gatekeeper of the Abyss. The temple can be located at the heart. Oh, I guess it always spawns there. Once you have defeated the Gatekeeper, you'll be able to unlock all hidden knowledge through the Abyssal Nomicon. Uh, the Abyssal Nomicon requires ax Axiom Ingots, Eldritch Scales, and the Essence of the Gatekeeper dropped by the boss. Okay, so we should be good to go, pretty much. I kind of feel like, though, we should go charge this thing up. So let's head over here. I'll use the Wand of Acceleration, bust through that real quick. And then we will take a look at the final boss that we have to take on. All right, guys, so here we are at the lair once again. Gatekeeper of the Abyss. So I repaired my sword. It was pretty low on durability, but I think we should be okay. Uh, I'm not sure if we're gonna have any minions. Oh yeah, okay. So it does spawn in minions, similar to the last dungeon we were in. As we get closer, these guys have quite the reach. <laughs> it seems like the only way I can attack them without them getting me is by me floating above them like this. Uh, so let's go check out what's down these paths over here, if anything. Oh, there's just second floor, okay. I assume it's going to be the same way on the other side. It definitely sounds like a blaze. I kind of want to see the boss, but I kind of want to check this place out too. Okay. I don't know if we have to go up there or just go dra directly down the center, but let's head over this way. Oh, interesting. Oh, bookshelf. All right, so this will be where we set up the final ritual, right? That looks like what that's all set up for. Okay, okay. So I guess the boss is upstairs, so let's go upstairs then.
So it sounds like a blaze. Oh my goodness, what is this thing? <laughs> it's like a Cthulhu looking thing, right? Kinda? So it has over 200 health. We're able to take it down quite quickly though. I assume this would be way, way, way harder if we were able to like, not be able to fly. But since we're able to fly, yeah, this isn't so bad. Nice. To kill a god if gods were puppets. Okay, these guys, and these minions have about the same amount of health as the boss did, right? So that thing is sparking now. He's saying stuff in the text, but I'm not. Oh, look at that. Whoa, that's like pulling me in. Yeah, I don't. I don't know if I want to be pulled into it. <laughs> Wow, that's pretty cool. And then like blue stuff up. If you survive the blast, take this fragment. Did we get a fragment? Essence of the gatekeeper, a mere fragment. You can feel it pulsing with power. That's awesome. Okay, well let's go ahead and finish clearing up these minions real quick, I guess. So we needed the Eldritch Scale, and that's what these guys dropped. They also dropped some of the Axiom, or I, I don't know how to pronounce that. The brick things that we needed. So yeah, we'll finish wrecking these guys, collect a little bit of their drops. So yeah, we got some of the scales and stuff. Uh, all right, all right. So what did it say that we needed to do? Let's go back in here in this. Progression. Once you defeat the Gatekeeper, you'll be able to unlock the Hidden Knowledge through the Abyssal Nomicon. The Abyssal Nomicon requires Athexium Ingots, Elder Scales. Okay, so I guess that'll probably be what this is for. And then we can probably look at doing that next time. Guys, we're going to go and wrap the episode up here for today. Oh my goodness, this mod is pretty cool. I've never used this before, so I wasn't sure what to expect. But man, definitely, definitely pleased with how this mod is turning out. But anyway, guys, that's it for today. Thank you guys for watching. Remember to leave a like on the episode if you liked it, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye-bye.